curator for the last seven months during this online exhibition. You can find out more about it on the website at imaginefreedom.art, imaginefreedom.art. And the auction and exhibition is actually live right now on artsy.net. So we'll drop the link into, into the chat uh, so that you can check it out. But I wanna give a special, you know, just a special shout out today to the Museum of the African Diaspora for joining us as partner, as movement partner for Imagine Freedom Artworks for Abolition and for co-hosting uh, today's conversation as well as the conversation we're gonna have tomorrow with Kintora Davis. So Sydney Kane is uh, a dear friend of mine and an artist who I respect deeply, whose practice um, has been fascinating because I view them as a dream catcher and someone who opens portals, sees portals, and then invites the energy and the conversation that's coming through it to be um, shown, you know, on the canvas. So Sydney, welcome, you know, to this this conversation. I'm really glad to have you as one of the participating artists in Imagine Freedom as well. And uh, just to say, you know, hello, introduce yourself a little bit. And we'll we'll give some land and acknowledgments and talk some more about your work. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm always excited to share space and, you know, um, in all this fluidity. Um, yeah, I'm, a, you know, I'm born and raised in San Francisco. I'm still here, right here. Um, right now, I'm in Hunters Point Shipyard with my studio. Um, you know, still a Black area, Black neighborhood. I grew up in the Fillmore. I grew up um, with my mother and my brothers and my grandmother. And my cousins are all still here in the city. We still live in, we still... Um, being born and also experiencing um, change and death and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm able to visit with you today from this unceded land, this stolen land of the Ramatash Ohlone Nation. Uh, we call it Oakland, California. Those of us who live in, in the north, northern part of California and the East Bay know that this is beautiful, sacred land that it is still being stewarded by the Ohlone people and that we walk upon it uh, with the most gentle and beautiful uh, step that we can. And so this conversation for critical resistance as well, so much of it has been seeded <laughs> in a different kind of way, S-E-E-D-E-D, seeded here in Northern California. Uh, I want to, I guess, talk a little bit about your practice um, and start with talking about the piece that you donated for the auction, the online auction that's that's currently on board. And um, while you're doing that, I'll put the link into mm -hmm. into the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's that's a whole nother wormhole. We start talking about land, you know. <laughs> I'm like on a super fun new site right now. The old shipyard. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, well, you we start there, like thinking about seeds and thinking about space and how space has, living in San Francisco has shaped how I, has shaped like my questions regarding existence, um, regarding what is seen and what is not seen and how even things that are, or people or spirits that are unseen are still here. Um, I've always questioned that, like coming from a, my, a lot of my family's Jehovah Witness, so like that's territory that is like, <laughs> you don't go into that territory, but, um, or that space. And I think my, I feel like my art has always been a realm in which I explore that, those questions of like, um, that we've been taught, like <laughs> the colonialism and slavery and whatnot, that we shouldn't go, right? Um, those spaces within ourselves and um, even physically beyond, you know, gates and whatnot. I've, I've wanted to go there. And mm. um, yeah, and creating is the way that, you know, we can go in places. <laughs> um, yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. I agree with this. I, I'm here. I'm feeling you on this. Yeah. You know, this this call to um, imagine and to mm-hmm. reimagine. And what we talk about, of course, you know, you hear that it's become quite a common phrase, radical imagination. You know, what is it that artists do? You know, what is it that mm-hmm. we share and offer to community? And of course, what it is, is that we widen the imagination, expand it and amplify the world that could be. It's not mm-hmm. only the world that is, it's the world that we want as well. And, you know, when I'm looking at your work, there's this um, veil, you know, between what is, uh, what was, and what can be. Can you can you talk about the the piece that you've donated to uh, Imagine Freedom? And I'm going to, I'll do a screen share, but I see that it's actually behind you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it may not look great through my phone in <laughs> Zoom, but. Um, so you'll, you'll share, but yeah, Tricksters, I, I named it Tricksters and Pools, and um, I just started like kind of like imagining these landscapes um, mm-hmm. in which these beings were coming out of these like uh, these open portals. Um, and I call them pools. They're like, I draw a lot of circles. So I was like trying to get the circle from like, not from right here, but from this angle. Um, in the her on the horizon, yeah, <laughs> changing the perspective in which um, you can see because you know when you see it through the horizon, you're like outward more or less. So um, instead of like hovering over, so I was creating landscapes in which I was looking outwards, um, and like yeah, there's like thousands and thousands of ancestors. I was like, oh, what does it look like? It's like you know, some people are like coming up and being welcomed by like. Um, this unconditional love. Um, yes. So, which is, you know, I don't think that in tra- traditionally, at least like here in the States, like when you say love, like the, there's like a different kind of like uh, color association. Like if somebody said draw love, it would be something totally different for the most part, I think. But um exciting I've had to train myself to be um to to honor the fact that love can come through anything right even through like these metals this graphite um this this black and white landscape or color scape whatever um and and yeah it's done mostly by like erasing like this was kind of like a sporadic I didn't do anything for like one month and I asked you what what is the technique here what what yeah. You know, graphite on paper? Is it chalk? Is it what what is the media media that you've used? Yeah. Yeah, most of these this one is um yeah, it's on paper with acrylic and then um kind of like dousing it with powder and then removing kind of. Um so then there's an emergence that happens out of the somewhere similar to the pools, right? These darker pools on the bottom um, where the trickster is emerging from. Um, so it's, it's the same thing, but just I'm doing the process of it. Um, so yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Their eyes come out. Uh, definitely like this, this one figure um, beneath the man with the hat. Um, she... Are they like this young, um, this young self? I don't know. I see it as like the person who's coming out of the pool as their young self, meeting them again on the other side. And they're also looking with their gaze like at the viewers. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a screen share so folks can see no, what, what it looks like. What they can see what it looks like on the artsy.net page on the option page, and if you. Had, I love this shot of you though, with your three pieces behind you. If you haven't uh, participated in an online auction before, you'll have the opportunity to check it out right quick. And then we can talk some more about critical resistance and their work and why you said yes at this point. So artsy.net, critical resistance, imagine freedom artworks for abolition. It's a benefit auction to support 
the ongoing work, the general operating work of this organization, in addition to the 78 artists who are supporting critical resistance, Sydney, you being one of them, um, the artists were also offered and invited to keep some of the proceeds from the sale of their work. And so you'll see, I'm just gonna scroll down. Um, you'll see across medium, there are prints, there are sculptures, works uh, on paper, on canvas, photography. Uh, this is a local Bay Area artist, uh, Oakland icon, Tracy Bartlow, her photography, Gavin Benjamin, uh, Kwame Brotwait, Lucasa Bramfman, Verissimo, Dimitri Broxton, who is education director at the Museum of the African Diaspora, is also participating uh, in the auction. And here's your piece. So I'm going to click on it so folks can see what it looks like. Um, so here's the piece that's behind you. And the information says that lot 14, refutations, tricksters and pools made in 2020, graphite, charcoal and steel on paper. Mm -hmm. And I wanna, I wanna point out the, the size of it because you work in small structure, but also a very large structure. This piece says it's 33 by 46 mm -hmm. um, and it's a unique work. The value of it says 3,500. Right now there's three bids out. It's at 2,500. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, the, the I think what makes it unique and, and why prison abolition and the use and the utility of art practice um, is something that you can share about and like step into your own art practice as a conversation right now. Why did you say yes, you know, to this mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, for one, it's like, no, I, I don't see how there's any argument about abolishing prisons and slave labor or any, any form of slavery, really. Um, so there's no, there's no hesitation in the ways that I can support if I can support, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the art is like, you know, I was listening to there was a, a, a talk yesterday, with like Simone Lee and Angela Davis and like, um, you know, some other folks, some film, uh, Julie Dash. Um, and, you know, like art being the space in which we are all multifaceted and where we imagine other possibilities. And right. that can be like, that's, that's at least for, even for me through music and whatnot and art, that has been my, uh, I guess my portal, my entryway into thinking radically, different, thinking differently about how to shape the world, right? So, um, so yeah, that's, this is the realm that I work in. So uh, whatever I can do to support that it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's an honor to even be, to even be asked. And, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did, um, how has, you know, the shelter in place, this COVID-19 situation, impacted your art practice or has it? Um, I'm, do, I'm doing a lot of things that people are not seeing. <laughs> people probably never see. I've been like making furniture and quilting and I'm trying to get into dolls now. <laughs> things that, <laughs> things that, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's all things with the hands, right? But it's still like in the, in the, in the lineage of like, coming from people who are creators. My mother seamstress and knows how to build. I have ancestors who build with their hands. And that's, it, it doesn't matter what the, what the medium is. It can be building uh, new, you know, new structures of society and whatnot, new ways of living. That's something you still in build, building with your hands, you know? Mm -hmm. oh. So this, this maker, this built with your hands piece is important. Uh, to your practice. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the materials that you use, the crushed metal, the, the yeah. crystals, uh, sometimes cobalt? I don't know, maybe if you could turn your phone a little bit, we could see there's an another piece, I think, to your left. Yeah. That, that way? Yeah. Tell me. That way? Yeah, tell, tell us about the materials themselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about slave labor. Uh, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about folks who are engaged or entrapped 
you know, particularly black people, African folk uh, on the continent and in the diaspora and who's, uh, whose bodies are caged, you know, in the United States as we talk about uh, surveillance and we talk about, you know, being trapped inside of a system. The prison industrial complex is multifaceted, but this uh, mining of minerals, you use these minerals that are uh, gathered from the earth from slave labor as well. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about, you know, the materials, the crushed metal and crystal and rock that you use. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole, whole wormhole too. Um, in which like this, I feel like there's so much more research I can do, but um, I know for sure, like this, like the steel, for instance, kind of came by way of um, thinking about, thinking about iron and the people who, you know, our ancestors who mount, mount, uh, mind, <laughs> um, the, the ores and whatnot, um, even like the traditions in which were brought here to this to this continent um, from the blacksmiths and whatnot. You know what I mean? Uh, that knowledge. I was I'm really interested into that knowledge and how it gets how it gets uh, passed down. And sometimes it takes different I don't know different um, ways of creating to unlock the potential that that holds. I think about the people who made machetes. Um, who make spirit instruments, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all of those kinds of things. And um, even in the case of uh, working th in slave labor and whatnot, um, sort of like the, the cracks in which people, our folks, um, I don't know, <laughs> took the, still took the material to use it for, um, for ways for freedom, essentially, mm -hmm. right? I hope that makes. I hope I'm saying it correctly in a way that makes sense, because I can see it. It's kind of hard to translate it <laughs> um, sometimes. And then you go to like even with the steel and this, um, the steel in the in the states and whatnot. The people who had to work with um, have you know like in the Midwest and the Northeast and whatnot. Um, like there's a whole story. I forgot um, thinking about. The photographer um, whose family are you know they come from like steel workers and whatnot. So, so yeah, it's it's definitely all interconnected. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think about how to how to use materials as power instruments. Mm. Instruments of power, materials mm. for power, and whatnot. How to flip it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, over the over the years that I've been um, following your your practice, and um, you know, there were at one point there was a time where you're being very precise uh, with how you were drawing out things, and now there seems to be more of a of a tendency for you to be in this blur. You know, and this is where these conversations, I think, in between in the veil. Uh, in terms of imagining and being in a dream state and pulling an astral projection as I, you know, witness and experience your work. Is that, is there a, is there an, a purpose for this that you, that your work appears to be in the blur, uh, in the, in this phasing, you know, of not quite here and not quite there, but it leaves, it leaves space mm -hmm. for imagination is what I'm saying. As as we interpret art in our own and through our own worlds, um, mm -hmm. you seem to be purposefully, you know, inviting people to imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I needed to. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was like, I'm just, I'm just aware of you going from very precise lines to blurred lines. Yeah. yeah. Urgency, definitely urgency. Mm. The the thin lines are not they're not fast enough. <laughs> Sometimes there's too many there's too many things that have to be said and shared um, with folks that uh, that's kind of like beyond me. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, okay, I gotta work uh, a little bigger. Um, <laughs> um, grander, I guess you could say. Um, yes, this is connection with memory and having people. Fill in the gaps, so to speak. 
um, for themselves, Black people specifically, because I think that there's a lot of messages for people when they hopefully <laughs> um, that's very like, specific, but then also not specific. I think it was at Betty Ono like ten years, eight years ago, whatever. Um, and my grandmother's like, "Hey, that's my that's my father. Like, you don't even know him." And, um, but then also like somebody else was like, "Hey, that's my brother." Like. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of like this blend, this mixture of like being open enough to bring folks together and still being specific. It's it's like a um, it's not either or; it's both. Exactly. It's yeah. not. It's, it's it's all the in between. Yeah. Are, are there some artists who have influenced your practice or you know the technique? Uh, Shout out. Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think one one artist, like when I was for sure, just kind of ex exploring and trying to learn artists was John Biggers. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> John Biggers, and then even just like looking at like, you know, um, yeah, John Biggers like wanting to create different archetypes. That mm -hmm. was really interesting to me. Um, I'm also really really into music and other forms of outside of like visual art um i'm interested in like how flying lotus creates soundscapes and stories through music like as a you know his background being film um you know i, I was talking about the talk yesterday uh with uh, his barbara um which i call it shopping bags and and Freeway spirits. I always forget the. I always forget the uh, the order of the words, um, and water ritual. So like those visuals that come, Terrence Nance, like uh, random acts of flyness is really. It's just like so many, so many layers. Um, yeah, and then yeah. It's everybody around me for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's I. It's been my pleasure to just spend a few minutes with you today. I want to encourage people to check out your work and to bid for it, you know, to support yeah. living artists, to support critical resistance in this ongoing work, this effort uh, to really unpack um, the structures that are being upheld, you know, and, you know, even, you know, my own, my own thoughts as the curator of the exhibition, along with a, an amazing team uh, of people who are thinking, who are curators themselves, who are artists, practicing artists, educators, um, and administrators, you know. So thank you for being part of this journey with us right now, this experiment. Um, I want to invite y'all to just go to imaginefreedom.art. And from there, you can click through and find the Artsy site that is live until October 13th, it's next Tuesday, the 13th, and we will have a closing night event. We'll have a closing night party, of course, because, you know, we like to party. Here, let me do a quick screen, screen share again before we leave and show you all imaginefreedom.art. So Critical Resistance exhibition is up on artsy.net. It's live. You can RSVP for the closing night right now. Uh, let's see where it's going to go. And this is the catalog. There's actually a 90 page catalog featuring uh, information about critical resistance. Welcome letters. Uh, our host committee member, Dr. Fred Moten, who was gifted with the MacArthur Genius Award a couple of days ago, wrote a poem specifically for this exhibition. And you can see all of this work, including Sidney Kane's work. Uh, the work of many other artists and on closing night the 13th there will be a live auction with seven lots seven artists including lava thomas uh theaster gates hank willis thomas um uh, sean theodore right and 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 a few others you know who are just also brilliant i want to encourage you all to check out the website contour davis who i'll be visiting with tomorrow is also part of the live auction um so it's just going to be amazing. And um, here we are. Some thoughts, some ideas, something to offer. What's your next step, Sydney Kane? Because mm -hmm. um, I, I heard the soundscape happening in the film, you know, piece. What's the next thing? That's yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I'm, I'm working on some um, a couple of sh shows that are to happen in the future. <laughs> um, it's kind of so. It's, yeah, COVID you never really know. Um, but um, still working with Moad and um, Oakland Museum, and yeah. I know. In Making fact, in fact, speaking, <laughs> speaking of the Museum of the African Diaspora, you're yeah. slated to be up right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You are part of the Emerging Artist uh, Fellowship residency there. Mm -hmm. So when the museum opens up, it will be your work that we get to see in the in the second second floor gallery. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Now I'm in the second floor. Yes. Yes. It's gonna so, be really fun. Yeah. The whole thing changed, of course, because <laughs> I had time to change. Time to change. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And I, I, I give thanks for the folks who, um, who have supported over these years and who come and who can't come. And, you know, there's other ways to like, I just want to share my work and may it all like, you know, help us all <laughs> expand. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm definitely looking forward to continuing our conversation online and in person and in San mm -hmm. Francisco here in the East Bay. So Congratulations. Thank you again for your generous offering. Thank you for supporting Critical Assistance. Uh, and thanks for Moad for hosting our short studio visit today with Sydney Kane. Um, we'll see you all again tomorrow. Uh, the is, is Friday, tomorrow, Friday, <laughs> October 9th at 1.15 p.m. You can join me right here for a short studio visit with um, the effervescent. Kentora Davis. Thank you for joining me today. Have a good day. Right. Thank you. Ciao.